NBA decides to take an off day yesterday. Well, we did it. We still bet it, and we still made money. So guess what? We're going to run it back today. We've got a full NBA season ahead of us. I've got three best bets for you, and this is the pre three. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble, looking back with another DYF bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day and just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Last night, like I mentioned, we had a very limited slate. No NBA, no NFL, a little bit of college football, not too much college basketball. We're still able to make money anyway. We cashed in our best bet of the day, St. John's team total over. No sweat bet there. We did lose on our hockey flyers puck live take. Hey, you hate to see it. I called some of my hockey buddies after I put out this thing. I even talked to Shelly from Book of Sports, and he was a little bit nervous for me. He was like, if there's a game that the Sharks are going to win, it's going to be this one. The management, hey, came out and basically said, like, this is their Stanley Cup because they cannot start off the NHL season with the worst recommended NHL history. So they played like it yesterday, so you hate to see it. One and one on the day. You can see I used their record right here. We're still crushing it, still killing it in the month of November. 10 and 4 but so far in the month of November. Can't be bad at that. I'm not going to put the NHL play on the record. I'm being honest with y'all. We're 0 1 on NHL. We'll probably finish the season 0 1 in the NHL. Maybe add a few more players a little bit down the line when there's another off day. But for right now, we're still crushing it at NBA. We're still crushing it at college basketball. And guess what? The season's just getting started. So we've got a lot more wins. So if you can, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And it with somebody that can go to sports better that if i was a heady in money then there's no need for us to do this but listen we've been casting and we've been making money together and hopefully we can keep and hopefully we can keep that train going today so let's dive into these best bets my first best bet of the day, I'm going to go to the association. I missed you, baby. I missed you, baby. We took a whole day up, and we're back. I got some NBA picks today. I'm excited. We got a full NBA slate. We've got a really good matchups on the board. I and mean, we've got some great match between like the Sixers and the South. And I mean, we've got some good games. I'm excited. So for today, my first best bet of the day, right? I'm going to go with a guy who's already made us money. Russell already this NBA season. So let's run it back. I'm going to give you some analysis like I gave you the first time. It's going to be the same exact analysis, truthfully. And we're going to go with Kyle Kuzma over 22 and a half points, minus 115 odds. I absolutely love this pick. Why? Because let's do some line reading, okay? So now we've got the Wizards that take it on the Charlotte Hornets. Probably two of the teams that are like absolutely the worst in the NBA. I don't know. We have a really high total. We've got a total of 241. That's absolutely ridiculous. The only game that's higher that I've seen this year is this Indiana game tonight against the Utah Jazz, and that line's at 244, which again is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it speaks to the lack of defense that both of these teams play. I mean, that, that, that's why I like Todd's moment of honesty, because you actually get to see defense. In the NBA, you don't really get to see defense until playoff time, but hey, it happens. And the line like 244, 240, that means that there's supposed to be a ton, a ton of offense. The Wizards team total is a 119. And the question becomes, who is going to score all those points? Out of 120 points, can you give me three Wizards guys outside of Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma who's going to help contribute to cricket? Exactly, because there isn't anybody there else that you can name. Right? For me, I'm literally staying off the Jordan Poole. I'm not sitting the Jordan Poole chain. I have one little small future I think to him most player that's just about cook not doing nothing off for the wizards i mean maybe he can turn it around sitting so early that's right now i'm not betting on him his total is about 20 and a half i do i think he goes over it yet but am i gonna bet on it no you know why because he hasn't been going over he hasn't been cashing i'm tired of seeing y'all lose money going on this sort of pool trade expecting to cash in who is the guy who's actually catching it that's kyle kuzma kyle kuzma's in absolutely buckets this year for the washington wizards and he's getting points he scored more than 20 points in every single game this year and he bottled this total of 22 and a half in the sixth game so you love to see that and he also went over the last game when he dropped 28 points against the sixers so both of these teams are about to push the pace today we're going to see an up and down game we're going to see a ton of shots we're going to see a ton of offense we're going to see a ton of tempo and when you really look at the numbers we should see a ton of possessions the wizards are number one team in the nba in possessions for game the horns are not too far behind them they're fifth in the nba in possessions for game so you love to see that right now also on the other side the hornets defense is absolutely god off pushing the ball a lot the Hornets are 27th out of 30 teams and points allowed per game. They're giving up over 121 points per game. So now we've got Kyle Kuzma, who, like I said, we've got a line of about 119 at team total. So we're starting to points to be seen. Who's going to score this? He's averaging 23.7 points per game on 29 minutes. That's the big caveat for me, right? 29 minutes he's been playing, averaging per game. And he's still averaging points per game. An NBA game is 48 minutes. So guess what? He should be able to play the amount of minutes that he should get today. Why? Because we have a small total. We have a small line in between three. 
So he got his lost red. It should be a close game between two terrible teams. And he's still getting these points despite the fact that they're playing teams that keep getting blown out. Right? Does that make sense to you? So now we're getting a team where he should get his own paint. I mean, should he, he only played 30 minutes in the Sixers game, so he shouldn't be exhausted. He shouldn't be tired. So if Kuzma sees 30 plus minutes tonight and shoots the ball 20 times and shoots the ball maybe at least five times three three point range, which he has done in literally every single game except for the season opener, he gets over this total. So don't overthink it. The lines are telling us what to do. It's a high total. It's a high line. It should be a close game. It's a close spread. So because of that, the points are going to have to be scored. None of these teams have showed us that they can play defense yet, and there's no reason why I should believe it now. So let's go Kyle Kuzma over 22 and a half point as the first best bet of the day, as that Wizards and Hornets matchup should be a high scoring one, and Kuzma should be right in there in the mix getting bucket. So let's lock that in as the first best letter of the day. Now, for my second best letter of the day, I'm going to stay on the hard one. I'm going to stay in the association. I'm going to go off a pick that might shock some of you guys, especially because we passed on this team earlier this week. And now I'm going to fade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Spurs here on the road against the Knicks. And I'm going to fade them. And I'm going to take the Spurs team total under 107 and a half point you can play this up to about 106 and a half we've seen that on certain books maybe 105 but 107 and a half is the number that i would have to grab minus 125 odds there this is the number is just way too high simple as that just way too high of a total way too high of a line i get it right this looks like the running gun they like to push the pace they're one of the top teams in possessions per game i spoke about that in my analysis on monday when i took their over against the pace just took that full game over but this is a little bit different matchup here okay they're playing tom thibodeau and the knicks the garden Tom Thibodeau, he's one of the coaches that actually forces his teams to actually play defense. This is not the Indiana pace that we're talking about. Right? They're one of the few teams that are going to play defense and control the pace on offense. They're not trying to run it, run up and down the court. Jalen Brunson tries to control that tempo. They want to play half-court offense. They want to play half-court defense. And I think that's the part of the problems for this team today that has some problems for it in the half-court. The reason why they like to push the pace tempo so much is because they have trouble getting playmakers to just get their own shot, create their own shot, or just score in the half-court net, or score in the half-court offense. I mentioned possessions per game in the Wizards analysis, right? Well, in the Knicks, if you look at their possessions per game, they're on the completely other side of the spectrum. I talked about how the Wizards are the number one team. Well, guess what? The Knicks are 29 out of 30 teams in possessions per game. And the Houston have less possessions per game than the Knicks. So that kind of tells you the type of offense that this Knicks team's played. And now they're going to force the Spurs to play in that court offense which could cause some problems for this first team. Now, they're in the middle of the pack in terms of points per game, averaging about 114 points a game. But that number takes a dip on the road. That number drops to about 110 points. Remember, why is it 107 half? So they're averaging about 110 on the road. But now let's look at the Knicks' defense. The Knicks have one of the top scoring defenses in all of the league. They're second in the NBA in opponents scoring per game. They're keeping opponents to about 102 points per game on that. But they're even better at home, with teams averaging just at 100 points per game when the Knicks play at home. Now, granted, we do have a small sample size here. We only have three games in the Knicks. So they go to grain of salt. But look at the teams the Knicks have played. They played the Celtics at home. They gave up 108 points. They played the Cavs at home. They gave up 95 points. Then they played the Clippers earlier this week. They gave up 97 points. So that's three playoff teams that they played at home. And the only team that went over was the Boston Celtics with that loaded roster, and they literally got there on the hook. So now you're telling me that the Spurs, a team that's probably going to be in the draft lottery, is going to score 108 points against them, and the Celtics did not even do that? And Celtics, and the Celtics barely did that? Ah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying it. I'm not that buying it. Wendy's not just going to waltz into MSG tonight and put up buckets. I'm sorry. I get it. I'm not buying it. I get it. And MSG is a place where a lot of young guys want to play. A lot of people talk about the historical value of playing at the Garden. Well, guess what? I think the Knicks understand that as well. The Knicks have the defenders to switch out on Webby. You can put Randall on him. You can put Mitchell Robinson on him. They've got the length of guys who can be able to disrupt a little bit, trap and double team him. Because that out there, the Spurs are going to be able to get the points today. I think the Knicks understand they're going to win this game, which is a very well game, which they need to win with only being three and four visiting the game. Yeah dropping the sounds right like they have to keep the scoring low in this game the knicks are 29 down 30 teams and points per game they're averaging only 104 points per game so if they're gonna win this game it has to be a low scoring game i'm not saying for you to take the under in this game because that total is kind of low it's like two feet 
Thank you. Reese went mate. But I'm just going to isolate it to the Spurs team total under 107 at points. The Knicks have not given up this to a single team this year besides the Celtics. And guess what? And I think this number is just way too high, especially going off of their last performance against the Indiana Pacers. This number is a little bit inflated to me. They come back down to earth today on the road today. Give me the Knicks defense in the Epic Garden. Spurs team total under 107 and a half. Minus 125, that's the second best bet of the day. Now, my third and final best bet of the day, I'm going to go to college basketball. I know you guys want to college basketball, but we do have a small slate there. And I know what you guys are probably thinking. He's going to take FAU minus the points. I do like FAU. That line's a little bit fishy. It's a little sketchy to me. I don't know why FAU, a team that went to the Final Four last year, returns all of their starters. A team that went to the Final Four last year, returns all of their starters, is now about a five, six point favorite. Uh, that's a little questionable for me. But because of that, I'm going to go to a different pick. And this one is for all my dogs. <laughs> and I'm going with the Drake Bulldogs. I'm going with the team total over 78 and a half point. I'll play this up to about 79 and a half. Once you get over 80, that's when things start getting a little questionable for me. Take, take the 78 and a half minus 125 odds across the books there. And now they take on Lips to come at home in the first game of the season. And there's a lot of expectations around this Drake team. If you watched this Drake team last year, they won the Missouri Valley Conference Championship, beating Bradley, which was the regular season champion, in the tournament by double digit point. They punched their ticket to the big dance, and they actually had that final four Miami team up against the ropes in that first round. I don't know if you guys remember that, but the Drake, this Drake team was leading that game by eight points with four minutes left to go. They blew the lead, obviously, because, I mean, Miami went to the four, but that kind of shows what this Drake team can do. They're that good when they're locked in and they can play hard, and they're in a competitive Missouri Valley Conference, and they've got some guys who can score the ball, especially because they're bringing back last year's Conference Player of the Year, Tucker DeVries, who averaged 19 points per game for them. He's coming back for his junior year, and this is a team that is truly expected to win the Missouri Valley Conference again. So I love to see that. Now they do lose some scoring. They lost three fifth-year players who combined for about 30 points in the game last year. But guess what? They picked up some guys in the transfer portal, which I really like. First one they got was Patton Wright, who averaged 17 points per game last season. He averaged 15 points per game the year before that at Cal State Northridge in the Big West. So yeah, I get it. It's the Big West. But like when I mentioned yesterday in kind of my St. John's breakdown, if you can get buckets, if you don't hoop on the D1 level, 17, 15 points per game, you know how to put the ball in the hoop. So because of that, I think he should be able to do it in this conference as well. They also bring in sophomore Ethan Roberts, who's some notes from Harvey, 12 points in the game last year. They bring in two guys who can kind of make up for that lack of scoring that they had there. But also, again, we do still have the brides, 19 points in the game last year. And he could take a step up this year with another year underneath his belt. I think all these guards that they have can really get this straight offense potent. You get them moving to a different level this season. I'm really excited to see how they look on offense. And obviously, you know, it's a little bit of a step up in class for some of these guys who played on the mid-major level to come to the Missouri Valley Conference. The Missouri Valley Conference, I mean, it's still one of the ice but it's definitely not the big teams. It's definitely not the the ACC. So because of that, I think, like I said, with that step up in class, I'm taking with the grain of salt. This J team averaged 73 points per game last year. So I'm expecting that number to go up a little bit this year with these additional weapons. But they're facing just a really weak Lipsicum King team. This team was in the bottom 100 last season. Their points per game allowed. They gave up around 73 points a game. And they already played a game earlier this week. And they gave up 76 points to Wichita State. Do I think this Drake team is more pulling on offense than Wichita State? Absolutely. This Lipsicum defense is terrible. They gave up 76 points, like I said. So I think Drake can be able to score one more bucket. That's all we need is for them to get one more bucket. They're going to have their home power behind them after coming off of that Missouri Valley Conference tournament win last year. This team has a lot of high hopes and a lot, and they've got a great fan base that can be able to support them. So because of that, I'm going to be able, I want to rock with the Drake Bulldogs today. Over 78 and a half team total. We passed on one of these yesterday. I think we can run it back today. Let's take the Drake Bulldogs as our third and final bet. That's it for me today, my friends. Three bets, three winners that are headed your way on this Wednesday card. We've got Kyle Kuzma over 22 and a half points. We've got the Spurs team total under 170. We got the Spurs team total under 107 and a half. And then we've got the Drake Bulldogs team total over 78 and a half points. That's it. Three bets, three winners that's coming your way. And as always, I can't wait to see the plays that you're taking, the money that you're making. Make sure you drop a comment. Make sure you click that link in the bio and join our Discord group where I'll be dropping some more of my other player pops today because we've got four player pops played. I've got a 
three or four more already loaded up for you guys. Uh, also got some more college basketball best bets for you as well. So make sure you guys are clicking that link in my bio, joining that free Discord group. So this way you guys can get all those extra quick templates. All right, my friends. As always, please take your fate. I'll see y'all tomorrow. We'll be celebrating another winning day. And as always, let's get to that paper and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Later, gang.